गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड सायराम सो वेलकम टू दिस सेशन ऑफ हिस्ट्री टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट हिस्ट्री सेकेंड चैप्टर दैट इज सोशलिज्म इन यूरोप एंड द रशियन रिवोल्यूशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल चिल्ड्रेन दिस चैप्टर हैज टू पार्ट फर्स्ट सोशलिज्म इन यूरोप एंड द सेकेंड द रशियन रिवोल्यूशन सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल ओनली डिस्कस द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दैट इज द सोशलिज्म इन यूरोप and we will take the second part in the next video that is the russian revolution okay now let's see the topic which we will discuss in this video so first we will discuss the age of social change then we will also read the views of liberals radicals and conservatives then we will discuss industries and social change socialism in europe and at last support of socialism so today's our topic is socialism in europe but before proceeding further let's first understand what is the exactly meaning of socialism so now just tell me what is socialism socialism means common ownership right socialism means common ownership now what is the meaning of common ownership common ownership means like everybody having rights to vote and participate on how global resources will be used clear okay now let's start first read the history of socialism so socialism has its origin in the french revolution of 1789 remember the french revolution of 1789 and the changes brought about by the industrial revolution so in the previous chapter of history that means in the first chapter of history the french revolution we read about the powerful ideas the powerful ideas of freedom and equality we read about the powerful ideas of freedom and equality that circulated in the europe after the french revolution the french revolution opened up the possibility of creating a dramatic change in the way in which society was structured as we read in first chapter before 18th century before 18th century society was divided into the states and order remember before 18th century society was divided into three states nobility clergy and the third states so it was the aristocracy and church who controlled all the economic and the social power but after french revolution it seems possible possible to change this so after french revolution in many part of the world including europe and asia ideas about the individual rights and who controlled social power begin to be discussed in india too the raja ram mohan rai talked of the significance of french revolution and other debated the idea of role revolutionary europe so this led the emergence of socialism in europe and the russian revolution the development in colonies in turn to reshape the idea of societal change so this chapter help us to understand the circumstances and the effects of these changes now the age of social change so as i said the development in colonies turned to reshape the idea of societal change or through the revolution in russia socialism became one of the significant and powerful idea to reshape the society but not everyone at that time in society or in europe not everyone was in the favor of complete transformation of society in europe clear at that time in europe not everyone in was in the favor of the complete transformation of the society 
so on the basis of political and social idea of change europe was divided into three major groups at that time there were three types of groups and three types of people first liberals second radicals and the third one is the conservatives clear first liberals second radicals and the third one conservative now let's read one by one the views of the liberals radicals and the conservative so the first the views of liberals so who were the liberals liberals were those who wanted a nation in which except sorry which accept and respect the dignity of all the religions basically liberals were those who wanted a nation that could tolerate all religion we should remember that at that time european states usually discriminated in the favor of one religion or another they just wanted to the safeguard of individual rights against the government they were also in the favor of representatives elected parliamentary government and subjects to law that interpreted by the well trained uh, judiciary that was independent of rulers and the officials but these liberals were not democratic why because they did not believe in universal adult franchise now what is the meaning of universal adult franchise universal adult franchise means that everyone should have right to vote these liberals they were not they did not believe in universal adult franchise basically they just felt that only the men of property should have right to vote they were completely against to the women's rights or to the they just completely against they did not want that women to vote so they were not democratic because they did not believe in universal adult franchise so these are the views of liberals now second radicals so who were radicals radicals were those who just wanted a government based on majority of the pop country's population clear radicals were those who wanted a government based on majority of the country's population now the second thing is radicals they mainly supported a women suffragette movement now suffragette movement that means a movement gave a woman the right to vote so radicals they supported women suffragette women now the third unlike the liberals radicals they opposed the privileges of great land owners and the wealthy factory owners basically they were not against the existence of private property but they disliked the concentration of the uh, property in the hand of few clear now third conservative now who were conservatives first of all conservative were those who opposed radicals and liberals after the french revolution even conservatives were also opened their mind to the need for change but early 18th century they were opposed to the change of ideas or the to change the idea of change but by the 19th century they accepted the idea of change they wanted that past had to be respected and change had to be brought through the slow process so who were the conservatives conservatives were those who felt that changes should be brought but slowly at the same time past should also be respected so clear liberal were those who just wanted a nation which accept and respect the dignity of all the religion they were not democratic because they did not believe in universal adult franchise but the radicals they just wanted a nation in which government is based on majority of 
country's population and radicals they just supported women suffragette movement and suffragette movement means a uh, movement gave women the right to vote radicals they were opposed the privileges of big land owners and the factory owners clear and the conservatives they basically they just wanted like past had to be respected now the next topic industrial society and social change so the period after the french revolution was also characterized by economic and social change triggered by growing urbanization and industrial revolution so this was the time period of economic and social change and it was also the beginning of industrial revolution so industrial revolution uh, brought many changes in social and economic life many cities came up industrial region was also developed industrialization brought men women children to factories in search of work but unfortunately the working hours were often long and the wages were poor now towns were rapidly growing even the population were also rapidly growing so the standard of living and the hygiene condition in laborers colony were getting worst with the decreasing of the demand of industrial good and this resulting unemployment so unemployment was common particularly during the time of low demand for industrial goods now at last basically the radicals and the liberals they searching the solution for this issue because at that time almost all the industries were the property of individuals so now let's read the role of liberals and the radicals in solving the problems and initializing the revolution so as i said liberals and radicals they search solution for this issue and almost all the industries were the property of individuals even liberals and the radicals were often themselves land owners big land owners and the factory owners who made their wealth through the trade and the industrial venture so their role in solving the problem associated with the urbanization and the industrial revolution basically they just felt that the effort of individuals must be encouraged so the profit of industrialization must or should be passed to the people or the society according to them that according to them that means the liberal and the radicals according to them society can develop if the individual's freedom was ensured they believed that an economy could develop only if its workplace was healthy and citizens were educated they believed in the value of individual effort labor and enterprise so basically overall they just wanted a nation where everyone have right everyone have freedom clear now the next socialism in europe so by the mid 19th century socialism was a well known body of ideas that attracted wide spread uh, attention so let's first understand what was the basic idea of socialism so socialism was a political idea right that based on that based on the belief that everyone was equal and money and property should equally divided basically socialist they were completely against the private property clear socialist they were completely against the private property and saw this private property as a root of all the social evil in the society clear socialist were against the private property and saw it as the root of social evils okay now let's read the now let's read the views of the different socialist and the philosophers uh, associated or the regarding the vision of future and to transform the society at that time some of them they just believe in the idea of cooperative 
at that time some of them some uh, some of the socialist and the philosophers they just believe in the idea of cooperative robert owen a leading english manufacturer he just wanted to build a cooperative community called a new harmony clear but others others they just want and others felt that cooperative could not build on high or we can say that on the high wide scale without government encouragement right so in france louis bank wanted the government to encourage cooperative and replace capitalist enterprise clear in france basically he was also the philosopher in france louis blanc wanted that government encourage cooperative and replace capitalist enterprises now what is the difference between the cooperative and the capitalism so capitalism is based on a uh, private ownership of means of production right and on the other hand cooperative is based on socialistic principles clear now next karl marx and the friedrich engels they added some other ideas karl marx he just believed that socialist society uh, basically should free the workers from the capitalism so karl marx and the friedrich engels they both were german workers political thinker and socialist so in 1848 in 1848 marx and friedrich they uh, they published the community manifesto the community manifesto in 1848 karl marx and friedrich they published the community manifesto and this basically brought the concept of socialism he just said that capitalist earn profit because of the effort of the workers clear he said that that industrialization gain profit because of the efforts of the worker but this profit is not shared with them so karl marx he suggested social struggle pointing out that workers had to be fight for their rights so marx inspiration or we can say the marx theory or ideology inspired workers in all over the world in all over the europe in fact the russian revolution in 1917 were also inspired by the marx ideologies clear so this were all the views or the uh, views of the different socialist and the philosophers regarding the future of or the vision of the future then support for socialism so by 1840 the idea of socialism is spread throughout the europe socialist they just formed an organization an international organization called second international right all the socialists they just form an international organization called second international now what was the second international so it was an international organization which was formed by the socialist to coordinate the various activities of um, the socialist at the international level clear what was the second international basically it was an organization uh, which was formed by the socialist which was the formed by the socialist to coordinate the various activities of the socialist at the international levels so socialist they just form an organization called second international to spread the idea of socialism in the europe the workers in german and england begin forming association to fight for better living and working condition they just set up fund for member in distress they also demanded to reduction of working hours and right to vote then in 19 by 1905 socialist and the trade unions they just form association or parties like 
for example labor party in britain and socialist party in france but however till 1914 socialist never succeeded in forming a government in europe but till 1914 the socialist they never succeeded in forming their government in the europe basically they just uh, representing a very strong figure in the poly- uh, in the parliamentary politics their ideas did shapes legislature but the government continues can be run by the conservative radicals and the liberals clear because all the parties all the political parties were illegal before 1940 is it clear so that's it for this part in the next video we will discuss the second part of this chapter basically the topic the uh, the russian revolution now waste time so the first question what was the root of all the social evils of the time according to socialism options are industries option b private property and option c workers so what was the root of all social evils of the time according to the socialism private property basically social uh, socialist they against the private property because they saw private property as the root of all the social evils in the society second question the conservatives they wanted a nation in which the government was based on the majority of a country's population option uh, now this statement is true or false so conservative wanted a nation in which the government was based on the majority of the country's population no this statement is false basically the radicals they wanted radicals they just wanted the nation in which government was based on the majority of country's population clear now next question question number 3 the association of people who produced goods together and divided the property according to the work done by the member is commonly termed as options are capitalism cooperative and collectivism so answer is cooperative so the association of people who produce goods together and divided the profit according to the work done by the member is commonly termed as cooperative now the next question question number 4 who was uh, sorry what was the basic idea of a socialism so socialist they were against the private property basically as they saw the private property as the root of all the social evils now next question there were different groups of thinkers in russia as we discussed in this video like the liberals conservative socialist and the radicals so you have to read the philosophy and identify the group first the past had to be respected so who want that past had to be respected conservative yes conservative wanted that past had to be respected second means of production should be controlled by the people so socialist they just wanted that means of production should be controlled by the people and the third one is the government should be based on majority the government should be based on majority of the country's population so who want radicals radicals want that government should be based on majority of country's population okay so we will meet in the next video till then bye have a great day